Everyone ready over there? Cindy, Tom? Let's go. All right, let's do it. Uh, call this meeting to order. Roll call. Barron? Here. Painstock? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Woodhouse is absent. Thank you. Uh, second item is to approve the agenda for the uh, utility agenda, the communications utility. Yes. Okay. Motion. motion is made. Second. Seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed unanimous. Uh, I did, Tom and I did change the agenda a little bit. We gathered a couple things together to make a consent agenda. On the consent agenda, we asked for a motion to approve the consent agenda in a second, and then we'll discuss the three items below it. We can always vote to not approve that motion should we choose to not choose it. So I'm asking for a motion to approve the consent agenda. So <coughs> motion has been made and seconded. Uh, we will discuss the three items under the consent agenda. The first one is receive and file board meeting minutes for January 14th. Motion has been made to, oh, you don't need to do that. No. Oh, true, yeah. uh, sure. and Is there any discussion on, on the board minutes? Uh, just down there under the uh, few changes when they're made in the field. Uh, I think the big discussion was uh, when there's a new project added. And I, I didn't know if Tom came up with. So I kind of asked for numbers on what the Anderson Creek addition cost us since it wasn't in the budget last time. I didn't see it on the agenda, but I assume we're going to touch on that this time. That would be part of his report. <coughs> yes. Okay. So that's. Because this is talked about little changes in the field, which mm -hmm. I think that was above that. Mm -hmm. So there was that's the only thing I see in there. Okay. <coughs> uh, if there's any, anything further for the receiving the file of board minutes, uh, we'll do the second one, approve invoices. And there's one correction. The, uh, there's an invoice from DASCOM for eleven thousand four fifty-seven seventy-six. That should be a communications utility invoice, and not it's on. Later on, the electric, we got a wrong fund number. Uh, yeah. I forgot to put the 954 in front of that one. Yeah. So if it doesn't have 954, it goes in the electric. Yeah. So we need to add more in that one item. Under, uh, yeah, under smart communications, uh, looks like there's a couple bills this time. Is, is there any breakdown on, I mean, is it just because he talked about getting close on the, TV channels that we're going to go with and that kind of stuff. Is that what? Yeah, I mean, did you finalize some of that? I put the document or? together that shows all the costs and what the work was. And I'll probably have that completed. I might get it done this week, and I'm just going to send it out. I'm not waiting for a board meeting. It's just for your information to know and to look at, and then we can talk about it at the next meeting. That we're paying for it now. We're going to discuss it later. Is that what you're saying? Well, which one are you talking about? Just a couple invoices, total of 9400 bucks. I just wondered what he'd been doing. Oh, well, that's probably uh, the uh, NCT, basically. Uh, <coughs> television. Those, that's primarily what he's been working just on. Just negotiating and stuff like that? Yeah, we've, uh, well, you got to have a contract with NCTC to be part of the cable TV. We're going to have to buy equipment through them in order to meet the allocations. So Curtis finally got everything done. Well, they checked our credit and he's able to get on their website and do what we need to do. So. Right, I'm just thinking if we're going to be up and going, we need all that stuff in line. For yeah, and that's the other thing I'm looking at. Is up and going. The list of all the stuff that we've got and what we got left. But. Okay. <coughs> also, under the Vinton newspaper, I know we publish our minutes there, and then under Vinton today, we have advertising. Any reason we don't advertise on? The regular newspaper just on Vinton today. I know peop people use Vinton today, but I'm sure people are looking at newspaper too. It doesn't look like <coughs> No, we haven't ever advertised for electric. Okay. So we can do that again. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. You 
anything else under the invoices? So we have a correction for DASCOM for 11,457, I believe 56 cents. 76, 11,477, DASCOM. DASCOM, okay, thank you. Uh, third item is received and filed January financial report. Anything on that one you'd like to discuss? It's the same. No, it's the same. I was waiting for it. Yes. <laughs> so hopefully the auditors come soon so we get all this. Exactly. Get the, the notes recorded and the assets recorded so it looks representative. <coughs> Should be coming. You pay Kim? Yep. And there are items A, B, and C. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda and second it. Any further discussion on that motion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried by unanimous vote. <coughs> Number four, receive and file communications. Anything to report? Yeah. Nothing? Cindy, nothing? No. Okay. Uh, five, committee report. Under communications utility, I don't believe we're having no, that right now. No reports tonight. Uh, item number six is citizens' input. We have several people in the audience. Anyone like to step forward and speak? Not at this time. Okay. Thank you. Under old business, we have two items. First one is an update from FAR. And so you're on, sir. All right. Um, contractor will be here back as soon as he can. So their, their equipment's here, they're set up to go. So they've been contacting us, but as soon as we don't want to do what happened with the vendor that's coming through, right? I did. What, last week and that's why you don't do that work in the winter time which will probably be a bit of an issue will I told my resident to make sure he, he's gonna be back down and just kind of look their stuff over again he's seen it when he passed through again but now that they're I think not mostly done with this first stretch so we don't get hit you know when citizens start complaining we want to make sure we coordinate with the other engineer and with the lion that you know, this is yours to clean up and this is ours and just being good neighbors at that point but bottom line get it done um, the only real uh, one change that we're uh, we recommended the town to do is to add another what we call the FSCs because as we did all the site surveys and in the area of town we, we try to put it in a you know 70% full at most but it, it's one, it, one of them became more more than that initially so day one you'd be okay but three years from now six years from now you could end up putting one in so it's a lot easier to do we aren't we have we haven't finished that whole area yet anyway so we inserted another one the cost is about thirty four thousand and change is what it's cost we, we're getting this well we're getting a final one from the uh, construction from scammer from the contractor but that's what it would cost it, bottom line is it, it spreads out. We'll kind of split up a little bit more out of the CO area, and then we're going to steal from FSC3, I believe, a little bit too. So it adds another one in. My biggest worry is that 5G comes in and it's coming. They will need fibers. We want to be able to partner with them, and we want to have access to those. I mean, it doesn't mean you won't necessarily put some fiber out there, but if you're partnering with them, they're going to be paying for that. So if we can get access to them and you know whatever they need at that point in time you know we want to be able to I guess I'm telling my clients who knows what the 5g vendors are going to do for sure they might just come in and overbuild and put but in most cases I believe they will come in and say who's got fiber in town and where can we connect to our macro sites and, and micro sites so so again that's been our recommendation of town that you know I think we need to do it now just in case I mean as far as what we're doing today frankly you guys would have never noticed but going forward well and then, you know as the i guys are in here as we grow and that's an area of town that could see smart growth so we looked at it and we looked at it it might be better spent today than spend twice that much five years from now plus you have to read it assign it so that part of town wasn't totally done so it's pretty easy to done we don't have to really change a lot of it where are you at it will well actually by your old uh what used to be the casey's building is where it will be located right next to the street there in front of the dental area there okay 
And for the average person on the street, what you're talking about is one of the large cabinets. Yeah, it's a large <laughs> cabinet. So it'll be in front of there, that, that uh, I don't remember the business. That, uh, Ask schools. a den or something. Yeah. A den. yeah, so it'll be next to the street, but you know, kind of right by here. So This cabinet's not as big as the other ones. Yeah, this one's a it's little a smaller. smaller it's, it's, again, we, we didn't have to, it's, it's not the same one as those, but it is still a cabinet. So. Uh, unfortunately, the big tree that was there on the Google Earth isn't there today. So. <laughs> But we, we can't put it line of sight from the window from the dental store through the tree. It's in this that's in Klein's dental property or across the street? It's in the right way. Yeah, it's in a public right of way. Now, but again, it's a, it's a design change that you know, we just, you know, again, you could, you could live with it, but I'd, I'd really not, I'd like to be able to come back in five years to say it was the right decision and not have you guys yelling at me that we got to put one in now. And I want to keep it far enough away from the, uh, Roads so that snow plows aren't uh, falling all kinds of crap on it. So it's got to be away from that. So. And you're getting a cost estimate on it? Yeah, we, we've actually already got a, we just need the vendor to sign off on it, but it's our cost estimate based on the unit prices we already have. Okay. And they've already looked at it, reviewed it, and I showed it to Tom today and said get a formal quote from him. But it's it's in a 34 to 30. So basically, it'd be basically the same price as if we'd uh, ordered it with everything else. It's yeah, yeah, we're just using, yeah, it's the same unit prices. There's no penalty or anything like that. And since they haven't, they got to finish that area anyway, it's not like it's anything special for them. As they go down there now, there's going to be a cabinet there as opposed to have them having to come back and do something special. So we, I guess that was the, the good Murphy's Law part of it. We actually got a little lucky there at that, that area without having to move it too much. So really, your next meeting, you'll have that firm, firm quote. Tom, do you need uh, some action in the form of a motion tonight on that? No. Uh, anything else? From bar? No, that's pretty much it for me. Okay. Any questions from the board for? Oh, I'm sorry. I we actually have been training up test customers. I guess I should be saying that. It's, <laughs> it's <laughs> that's out there. That's good to know. And, uh, <laughs> so, got uh, the power company business office is on for just wireless. I haven't converted at all because if I convert that office, I convert this office, mm -hmm. and that takes a little bit more co coordination. I hate to knock down the police department. Uh, and we're in two test friendlies, and the I didn't office is out. Mm -hmm. And I believe we've got three or five scheduled for tomorrow. Next couple days. So. Your city manager probably would have been here, but I'm sure right now he's reconnecting all of his equipment. So that's my guess. But it's his house was today. Oh. <laughs> I actually go ahead and go see that. I wanted to see his blade cam. That's pretty amazing. He's what got like that? 71 devices in there that uh, he talks to Alexis through. And, uh, so he, if he can break it, he'll be the one to do it. Yeah, he is really uh, one we really wanted to turn up because. I, don't, I doubt we'll run into anything more complicated, even in, even in some of the businesses. The, the, I mean, uh, Chris has got quite a thing <coughs> in there. It, I don't even know how he gets around all that stuff. Well, is Kim on your list too, then? Tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah. Well, you're on, you're on I'm tomorrow. I'm tomorrow, yeah. They're, they're in the process of doing that, and we'll just kind of keep working on that as uh, we move forward and get all the other details done. But. I told Logan he was my favorite phone call of the week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll have inside information. For we'll me. have inside information, yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay, so he didn't know if we'd be doing any Facebook <coughs> lives from my house like we did last time you showed up. And I was like, well, we'll figure that out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll see. That's good. Sounds like you've uh, thought well yeah. about who you're going to have on your as your friendlies for testing. Yeah, and, and, you know, that's, that's the key. It's just, we, want, we want people to be using it, and we want them to be able to come back and say something's not working at all. Uh, they were working through an issue today with, with one, and it's just between Logan and Matt, it just took a little longer, than, and that's what happens sometimes. I mean, it's just good to set up, but get it all working, and then we'll keep working on it. We're getting closer. Okay. Anything else? No? Any more questions so far? All right, we'll move on to the next item of all business and update from IMON. So obviously, the, from a services standpoint, the, the 
phone system is to connect to bin is completed and it's been ready for a while. Obviously, the internet's connected, that's how it's working. And the video transport, taking that from Cedar Falls down here, that, so the services themselves are up and running. Um, kind of the, I put generically the two other parts of the um, bucket, the, the operation standpoint, that includes revisioning, the engineering, the installing, all, all that. Um, so we've got pretty much a, the diagram of the kind of logical flow and how that works, everything from how many times is the phone ring before it goes busy, down to if there's a problem, which engineer is going to tackle that um, type of thing. So that's mostly completed, and um, with that one revision, having the, the kind of the primary tech be a VIN resident, we've actually identified two people. That one lives in VIN, one lives right outside of VIN, that we'll hopefully be having a conversation with next week to um, check on qualifications. But um, so that fairly fortunate because that's a, it's a hard job to staff even in Cedar Rapids. And you go into a small community, it's, it's a little difficult. Um, so we're making a lot of good progress there. The, the kind of the biggest tent in the pool right now from, from an overall standpoint is the, the OSS BSS system. Um, simplify what that is. It, it's kind of commonly referred to as the billing system, but it's a lot more than that. So obviously it, it produces your bills, but that's also a system that uh, auto provision is the one that writes the trouble tickets. It's the one that dispatches. It's the one that talks to the Cedar Falls utility system. It talks to the Calic system and the HUD here in town, talks to our equipment and kind of ties the whole we go together. So. To get that cane off the ground, it requires a lot of a lot of data. Um, so it's kind of one of the things where once all that data we get, we, we move forward as fast as possible, and that goes to a third-party company um, to write the scripts and programming and things like that. So um, from the technical side of the house, I believe we've got um, we have to review everything tomorrow, but I believe we've got everything we need to go there to get that off and kicked off to CHR, which is the company that provides that system that you guys will be using. Um, the other part of that, just the last piece is we're just going to do kind of a review just to make sure from a, um, a general accounting standpoint, it's nothing we really identified in the agreement that we'd be providing for you, but we'd be best suited to do it. We're not charging any extra, but just making sure the extracts as far as the requirements for your general ledger, your <coughs> regulatory reporting and things, or it's infinitely easy for us to just while we're doing this, get that all going. Because if you try and do in that looking back, when the auditors go, where's this data? That can be a nightmare. So we want to make sure that we get all that up front. So uh, uh, Tom and Cindy will be talking to our finance folks here in the near future and um, hopefully be able to figure out everything we need on that. Obviously, we can change as need. We just want to make sure we can provide all the data you guys need on an automated basis um, and then, you know, look back at stuff too. So that's kind of the other part that goes into that step back in general ledger data. Um, so that's kind of the last piece for us. And then... Um, it's a big one. It's the most complicated one, definitely, from our side of the house. That's kind of the last thing we're meeting. So. Any yeah, questions so on that at all? Or? That was a lot of information in a short time period. It was. Uh, I can stretch out a lot longer if you like. That's <laughs> not what I was asking you to do. I want to make sure I heard you correctly. So it sounds like there are a couple of people for the tech position, maybe the end of next week or the week after that. You might have somebody on board for that. Yeah, so we have, uh, we've got names actually from um, some contractors that have been here in town doing other parts of this project. Um, <coughs> we haven't talked to them, um, but we've got good reviews from people that work with them, so we're going to talk to them. We're also looking elsewhere too, um, but that's going to be a big one. Obviously, if for some reason that falls apart, we've got a whole horde of folks from Cedar Rapids that can fill in, um, just like they would with Overflow, um, until we get kind of that the resident um, individual. Um, so there's there's a backup plan in case that falls through, and Plan B falls through. Plenty of backup plans, but yeah, we we have our eyes on a couple of people that one lives in town, one lives right outside of town. Well, I'm, the questions I'm going to ask, I'm going to be very careful not to make, ask for specific dates and times because I know this is all in flow. But sure. what you're doing now is what is going to determine when we are actually going to be up and running. The determinant on that's the going to be is being done, so. the determinant on that's going to be the completion of the OSS BSS system. That's my next question. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's going to be the determinant. Um, the reason for that is that you, you can manually provision a house um, and, and get the functional services running. Um, that doesn't scale well um, because if you do that manually, there's nothing to really fix manually. If there's a problem, you literally have to go out and take a look at it. So. You can do it, but it doesn't scale well. So really, to have an actual operational thing that's in the operations is really is, is what's going to set this apart, is the, the need for that to be fully completed. And it's usually, with most municipalities and independent companies, that's usually the, the thing that kind of lingers because there's so much work that has to be done before you can actually 
start on that part. Um, but that's going to be kind of the, the highest end of the poll. Um, Dave, I, and Tom talked to this afternoon as far as what those dates are kind of translating like. Um, I can, Tom can kind of refer to that. I don't know if that's an open topic at this point, but we do have kind of some target dates on our expectations on that as well. So. Okay. Can you explain the percentage of, yeah. of done? For the OSS? Yeah. It, there, there's different stages. So there's the accumulation of data, um, things we need. That's pretty much done. There's just a few missing parts that we've been collecting from different folks, from Barb, from Tom, from different people. That just kind of as it comes. So that's pretty much done. We've reviewed to make sure we have all the data. So we'll be reviewing that tomorrow if there's no questions. At that point, we'll ship that off to CHR just for them to start writing the scripts. There's also some work with RSA. We do some software programming to make that all work. Um, so that part hasn't started, but that's kind of the necessary evil of that is to have a scope of work. Yeah. So kind of like painting the kitchen. So you're basically without done color. with your percentage of the work to hand it off to the third party to get. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's awesome. So you have something to say? Yeah. When is this all going to be taking effect? Like what month? Because I called down to IOM, down to a bit and a bit, and then they told me at the end of March, everything should be hooked up but at first it was at the end of December people are wondering why and even me is wondering when's this all going to be done because they're waiting for it I'm hooked up I'm signed up and then all I hear out of him is you guys are getting hooked up and everything and the city's getting set up but what about the other people that are going to pay for the service when they're going to and that's what people are waiting for they're waiting for to hear from you guys on the date so they can sign up when they get close to the date so they can have their service they don't want i'm already paying mediacom an extra 50 to 60 bucks just to keep up with my service because i added a few extra things but it, it sounds like a good idea what you guys are doing but we're just getting a little tired of hearing different dates and nothing nothing coming down we check the papers we call down to the event and ask them and they give us at the end of March. And now, is that an accurate statement or is it just a rough estimate? Uh, first of all, I wish you would spoke up during public comment. I didn't, don't know, your I name, know. who you are. What's your name, please? Carl Hartway. Carl, thank you. and thank you for speaking up now. We want to hear from people. There's nothing you said that we're not thinking also. We want the date set down in stone and that's one reason why I'm not asking for a date tonight because we don't have an actual date that we can say. Okay. We've been shooting for the end of March, depending on how the winter went. Well, the winter's still dragging on, so mm -hmm. uh, the end of March sounds less and less likely. Um, I, I certainly wouldn't make my plans that it's going to be ready to go by the end of March. And please don't think that everybody sitting up here is getting the internet. I have a box on the side of my house with no conduit to it. So well, I'll, I'll, be, with me. I'll be one of the ones, probably 501 before but I get it. So don't But public comment, I didn't know that the cable guy, is the guy from ION was actually going to be here. So I didn't know until he spoke. <laughs> so I can't say ahead of time what I was going to ask if he wasn't here. But I'm also, I got his input. So now I'm just asking, mm -hmm. when's this going to be finalized? And the answer is that we can't give you a firm date, that we're getting it up and running as fast as we can, but we're going to start it when it's ready to start. We're not going to okay. start it just because we picked a date. Okay. okay. We have, we have, we're trying to get, you know, we're kind of at the 90% level with a lot of things and a lot mm -hmm. of movement parts. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the regulatory stuff got held up. Um, obviously, Mother Nature kicked mm -hmm. her butt last I understand year, we didn't, that. We didn't, which slowed us up as far as getting as much done. But uh, we're still hoping, and we're, with the test customers, we want mm -hmm. to test in particular. Right now, all we're doing is turning up internet. Okay. And frankly, if you were somebody that wanted to test the internet, and you are one that has the cable, about it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we, that'd be a conversation to have with the event. If you if you actually have more than the duct in, and you've got cable into your house. You know, we can we can do something with at least. The no, I got just the plain way. internet in my house. Yeah, that's it. Cause I the cable got so high through media comment, I decided to throw it up, throw it out, tell them to take it. Yes, yeah, so cause they know. raised it up by about thirty or forty bucks. Yeah, so you're not getting a TV right now. No, I got uh, the streaming line thing okay. cheaper. Um, maybe 
talk to Tom or one of the ladies down at the office because we could okay. if, if you've got if we've got the physical cable up to your house that's okay. what you need oh, to check where you're at. It right. might be just the box and the duct. Right now you got is the uh, line, the tube, the orange tube and uh, I got the box. That's okay. It. So until we get the actual cable there, so that's that's, that's basically what people are wondering when actually the cable is going to be ran in there. But, but as, as soon as they can go this spring, they're coming in with a lot yeah. of crews, which they're already warning us. Okay, that's we need that's a lot fine. Of that's so what people still, were just asking. So hopefully we'll have all the construction done by the end of June at the latest. Hopefully okay. in, in late May, and then in the meantime we'll be hooking up everybody we can. So I think we have about five hundred that have signed up. That we have cable too. I, 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 in areas, no, I don't know. That's just no, that's, that's, that's total. And then we got certain areas that have cable. So well, that's, that's what we're working on. So that's fine. I understand the weather. I yeah, it's it's I know okay. the weather. And believe me, there's only really one patient. I know you, you guys are paying, but the, the ones that are trying to do it, mm -hmm. I wanted to have. I'm never satisfied, but I wanted to have it done last fall so we could be doing this right now. But it didn't happen. Well, that sounds that sounds fair. But, but okay. that's what we're working for. Gentlemen, that thank you. Thank you for that your interest. Thank you for your interest. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know where to contact. And yep. Now I know who to contact and where to contact. So uh, back to Iman. Is there anything else that you have to provide for us tonight? Um, that really kind of about covers the the status as a whole on that. Unless you have any questions for me. Yeah. No questions, uh, and I'm, gonna, I'm sort of going to speak for the board as a whole. Is that we know that your part is the next part that that needs to have, has a lot of pins, pieces to get to that 90 percent so it goes together. We need we need Imon to do it for us. Absolutely. We're counting on you. Yeah. The people of Benton are counting on you. So we look forward to that day that is completed. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item number eight. Uh, any other new business? There's nothing listed here. Nothing tonight. Okay. That leads us to reports, Tom. Yeah, we got a couple things. Uh, as of February 6, which was our last uh, construction uh, weekly meeting, we had a uh, 1,505 site surveys completed, and I'm sure more have been done since that time. But that's the last number I got that's firm, and, and that's completed out of like uh, 1770 or 85 percent. What we found out was. Uh, a lot of people were calling in for their site survey and the landlords were calling in for the site survey so we had a bunch of duplication so when I thought we had 1950 we didn't uh, we're closer to that 1770 but that's still an awesome number for the numbers so and we've got over 500 uh, signed up for services now and we're, we're uh, trying to re-advertise to get people you know so we've got uh, 1,500 site surveys done, so we're working on a thousand people that haven't signed up mm -hmm. to, to get them. Now's the time. Not, you know, if you got a contract, fine. Uh, but we, we, we'd like to know, so we know we put the fiber in the duct when they're ready. So, and that's all weather dependent right now on the fiber in the duct. Well, <coughs> yeah, they won't be putting any more in until they come back. Yeah. But so if we get that list, that's what we need to do is get the list from them. Yeah. Now, did calling people did that help get them to sign up? We had issues trying to get a hold of people. We left a lot of messages, um, so not a lot of people. We did have 12 people in the last two days sign up, though, so it's starting to trickle back. But we did have 12 people in the last, you know, 24 hours, 48 hours sign up. So they're starting to come back. We're at the point where we're not worried about any more site surveys for people signing up. We got enough. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we just need people to, you know, mm -hmm. sign up for the services. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so on, uh, I guess uh, also uh, I'm working on a summary for the RFPs. Uh, I just got some information from one of the uh, assistant project managers at IMON. So when I get those reports now, I'm going to go ahead and email them to you uh, when I get them done so that you can look at them and bring back questions next time. And uh, that's all on the uh, communication tool that I got. Sanderson Creek part of this one? Well, that's one of the RFPs. That's, oh, that's on the RFPs. Yeah, I mean, first question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, since it was asked earlier, do you have a number for what it costs to put that hub into, not hub, cabinet into Anderson Creek? Well, yeah. 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 What, uh, what's here? It, it was uh, 55641 70 cents. Our estimate to do it 
by ourselves without the electric assistance was around 120,000. So basically about 50 cents on the dollar working with the electric utility. I think 120,000 was the estimate I gave John Ketchum when we first met with him. When he was first just gave us the uh, flats. So, so basically about 55, a little less than 50 percent by doing the joint with the electric utility. Which is good, but that's to my point that it wasn't just a minor change order. It was a big dollar amount. Oh. And for us not to know that it actually happened or get to make a decision is what I was kind of getting at. Be and, part of that. And actually, that should have been reported in the uh, next meeting because it's part of the electrical oh, infrastructure. Right. Well, the question was asked here. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's why. Well, it's in a minute here. No, change orders. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's when it was discussed at the end of the. Yeah. I have it over here in the utility. <laughs> this question. Yeah. Okay. That answers the question. If you'd like to discuss it more, we'll bring it up again at the electric utility. <laughs> okay. Fine. Good. Okay. Comment, anything else? No. Any other reports, Cindy? Uh, hearing none, uh, our tenth item is agenda. Is uh, the motion to adjourn the communications agility meeting? Motion. motion made. Second. Seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed unanimous. We adjourned. 531. Anyone need a short break? Yep. Is this the time to take a short break? this meeting to order. Roll call please. Farron? Here. Yes. Meyer? Yes. Woodhouse is absent. Thank you. Uh, approve the agenda. Motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed mm -hmm. unanimous. Again we have the consent agenda. I'm requesting a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Moved and seconded. We have uh, four items on the consent agenda. First one is to receive and file electric board utility minutes, meeting minutes for January 14th. Any uh, corrections or discussion on those minutes? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to item B, which is approve invoices. We already know that the one was removed and put into the electric uh, utility. Mike, do you usually have some questions? <laughs> sure. It gives us space and we know you've read it all. Yeah. Uh, capital 
bank card. We got processing fees and then January credit card fees. They're about the same. Is that two different months? Two months? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, deal. I had a question at Encoder, but that's already been moved to to our communication. Now that flood insurance premium, six hundred seventy nine, is that the total for a whole year? That's the, the least expensive that you can get. I mean that's pretty I thought that was pretty cheap for a year. You know, so basically they just covers the requirement of having it. But we yeah, we're required to have it. Right, right. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. It covers the cold storage building. Oh, okay. Nothing else. Well, that makes okay. Sense. <laughs> oh. I'll say that's awful cheap for <laughs> we're not getting insurance on the generation plan or the distribution and we'll get this. Yeah, I didn't think so. I thought for that it's a heck of a deal. Okay, so cold storage. <clears throat> that uh, training web hosting, sixteen hundred bucks. Is that we splitting out the city, or is that something? It's under U.S. Bank. That's probably uh, the training is probably training for. Uh, Two of the uh, trainees, or the two of the the uh, apprentice linemen going to IMU. That's their training. I'm not sure what the website thing has. We got the bill. Did they take the training here via the web? No. no, no. They had to do that. Thank you. They had it was meter training. They were getting exposed to. Why would you the U.S. US because they're all going to charge on the U.S. bank credit card. Uh, credit card pays for a lot of bills that uh, if you right. don't have credit or yeah. if they won't right, right. take a PO on the email. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's what they want to do. Yeah. 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 So we we do our our own web then, and we still splitting out the city. Uh, we're doing our own. Okay, so this is probably so. Most of that stuff uh, is website for the communications utility, and that's this U.S. Bank thing that splits. I don't know which ones uh, which ones add up to this one more time. Um, we got the I didn't up here. This one that was meals for the travel there. I am you is okay. That's the biggie. That's the training. For, that's the training for the nine hundred ten dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Hotel was. That's their hotel too. Yeah, five hundred dollars. So mostly training expenses. It's, it's basically all training. There's no, no uh, communication here. I thought I heard you. No, say the communication was is okay. that bill gets split between them. Right, right. I just thought you said communication. Yeah, these are only yeah. These are only yeah. <coughs> you said it was training for two of the electric utility. Yeah. Two linemen. The two youngest ones. Newest. <laughs> yeah, and good hands, though. <coughs> okay. Uh, next to the bottom of that page, anything else? No. That wheeler, that manifold repair? That was for generator eight. Eight? Yeah. Okay. Kevin decided to do that thing at the same time when the other part was being torn out, so we did it all done in one crack. And that probably told it. It was, it was separate. Projects <coughs> done at the same time. Okay. Finished with the invoices. Moving on to C, receiving the file January financial report. I did notice there was a transfer from the electric fund to the electric capital improvement fund of forty-five thousand. Fifteen thousand a month. So I usually try to do it quarterly. Okay. Thank you. Because it wasn't on last month's. Right. That's why. You forget. Every three months sometimes. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing how fast three months comes around sometimes.
Anything else, Tom or Cindy, talking about the financial report we've mentioned? Okay. Okay. Uh, D was uh, approved the mo monthly energy adjustment factor. Let me see it comes out to be a negative number again in this one. Okay. Okay. Them. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Just any questions about it? No. I think that's the third month in our role that's what happened. It is. Could be. Yeah, it happens quite often right now. It's, it's such a small number. <laughs> that means our base is pretty close. That, that's what we want. Well, it used to be 40% of the uh, electric bill to be changed the base. So that's, the that's why it's a small number now. Yes. Okay. Any other discussion about the energy adjustment? Uh, if not, we have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Any further discussion on that motion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion to pass <coughs> unanimously. Uh, item number four, receive and file the communications. Anything from the utility? Okay. Moves to uh, committee reports. The one that's listed here is the real estate offer that we've been dealing with. Uh, Mike, do you have anything to report on that? I haven't heard from it. I haven't heard a thing either, so there's nothing to report on that. Any other committee reports? There's none. Uh, item number six, Simpson's input. This is to talk about the electric utility. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's from the public. Okay. Thank you. Old business. We're back to far communication or far technology. Yeah, I guess I jumped the gun. <laughs> <laughs> what is it you like? What is it you told us already that you wished you would have said now, briefly? <laughs> yeah. yeah, basically, with this, it ended up costing fifty-five thousand and change for that uh, Anderson. Well, I'd ask you the number, so <laughs> you and didn't jump the gun. And then, uh, again, that's what, uh, when we met with John, it was 120, so to do it all. So, the luck is that's where we ended up. Mm -hmm. so, thank you for that number. Anything else from Bar? Yeah, that was the only one I'm Okay. Any questions? Okay. Okay. We'll move on. New business. Uh, this is uh, to enter closed session. We're not going to be able to do that because we cannot contact our fourth member. So we do not even need to table this because it cannot be acted on. We'll just have to come back to the next meeting. Uh, the second new business item was related to that same thing, therefore. Correct? Why well, not? It, it is and it isn't. Oh, I mean, okay. Uh, the uh, second one? I'd like to get, get things going to get uh, the body there so that... Uh, it's going to take two or three years to train Kevin's replacement, mm -hmm. and uh, it won't be any of the guys that are working there now uh, because they're all uh, been working for the city a long time, all of them. So, so the new item of business, uh, post position for generation position, um, that's what you would like us to to act upon tonight. Yeah, if, if we get approval, so that we can right. post it. And I assume that we have a general policy or. We do. We found the contract on that. It tells us tells us what to do. Yeah. Of course, we're going to follow that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this is a position, of course, we're going to want to fill. Yes. So Buford is done, right? He's retired. He's done. So they we're do. down a guy right now. Right? We're, we're down one, and we have one that could be gone in another year. Right. So that's why uh, having four now is probably down three in the not too near future too. So. Okay. And do we need four, or do we need three, or what, what makes least, it run smooth over We there? need three minimum. Right. The, the, fourth one, the only reason I bring the fourth one in now is to give uh, enough time for this person to have the two or three years they're going to need. Okay. So with what we have, as far as on call, vacations, everything, three works. Or is four three, better? Three, no, three work. Four would be better, but uh, whoever the fourth person, then they won't be ready for on call for a long time. Well, we I mean, yeah, at, at least, least a year. Yeah. I understand that, but we've known these that Buford is retiring a year ago, and yeah. Jeff probably coming up. So, I mean, if we're doing it just to get him trained, we should have him on board by now. Well, that's what I want to do. Let's get him on board. Okay. I'm looking for a motion to post a position for a generation position. 
with the motion to post a position for the generation position. That's fun to say. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded to post a position for the high generation position that's empty. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed unanimously. And that brings us to number nine, reports. Tom or Cindy? Okay, it's uh, been a fun new year. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> the line crew's been working on a lot of locates uh, for this uh, Kramer service group who's actually doing the boring and trenching for Alliant Energy for their project, and that was the project we tried to partner with them on, and uh, they wouldn't uh, work with us in the end. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of mess in the spring for them to clean up. I'm, I'm hoping like heck they didn't damage any of our duct when we went up till later. Uh, they, I think they told us they weren't going to actually come till uh, next year when it was uh, uh, warmer and, and that. But uh, hell, I pushed them to do it. So, you know, they were out there. They didn't put any heating blankets down and thaw off the top. So when they were using the back hose, bringing out chunks, and uh, it looks like crap right now. And we'll see. I know uh, Central Cable had left it as good as they could when they left. And, uh, most of the crap out there is not caused by that. Um, both Nate and Bryce went and attended the training classes for the meeting school. Guys have been uh, still doing tree trimming uh, and they're working on their apprentice program. They're doing a lot of studying, taking tests. And they've been preparing for the 2400 60 volt conversion. We've got quite a bit of the material in the wire uh, and Bryce is trying to work that in. We'll take on as much as we can. Then might come to a point where uh, we got to go to the union hall and get some extra help in order to do certain sections. But uh, you know, this is still like a four or five year project. Anyway, it's not going to be done all at one time. Uh, generation plant. We did, we went ahead and got the uh, repairs on Unit Eight finished. Got it up and tested. Uh, the Cincinnati Insurance Company is supposed to be sending us a check. And that check covers 90% of the total cost. It'll be $874,698.69. That $25,000 that we talked about actually is a minimum. It's 10% or $25,000 minimum. And uh, so we're going to, our cost on the 10% is going to be $97,188.74. And it still needed to be done. It's our biggest unit, and on a demand charge, you know, we're still making a hundred thousand a year having our own plant like that. So we we just paid for the uh, fix with that with extra right now. But yeah, I did. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't have a copy of that. The uh, and I asked the uh, guy talking to me about it, so he sent me the, the page out of the thing, and uh, yeah, down at the bottom, special provisions, if any, deductible will be 10% of the loss with a 25000 minimum. Well, I'm going to bring up a discussion that's been rolling around my head ever since we approved this. If we tried to sell generator number eight, we couldn't get somebody to haul it away because of the cost of moving it. And if we just said to the insurance company, tell you what, you write us a check for five hundred thousand dollars and we won't fix it. I don't know if they would have done that or not, but if there's anything like this happens again, I will be asking that question. So, so could you repeat that again? Basically, if instead of repairing number eight, if the insurance company wrote would have wrote us a check for a half a million dollars instead of them writing out a check for eight hundred and seventy four thousand dollars is what they did, and we just don't repair it and put the money in the bank. I realize that reduces our credit for any, you know, energy. That, that's our best that's unit. That's the land that produces our power. But how long would it take you to make back that half a million dollars that you already have in the bank by selling it to the insurance company? Those are the numbers that I would like to make. Make a hundred thousand a year, that'd be five years just on that. Yeah. If you want to be simple on that. Yeah. Well, it'd be six years with the hundred thousand dollars we have to put in as, as uh, uh, 
then we had to buy a tower because we couldn't produce our own. Yeah, and we would get less money for our accreditation. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's all kinds of factors in it, but it's, it's not a simple, uh, it's not a real simple thing to analyze. There's a lot of things to consider. And I'm just making up the number. Perhaps maybe an insurance company might say we don't do that. I don't know. But we, in my mind, we didn't ask that question, and I understand why. There's all these other factors. But I just wanted to put that out there, so should this situation arise again, I will be asking that question. Well, I'm going to ask him anyway now that you brought it up. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'm not saying we shouldn't have fixed it. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, I know. I know what you're saying. Okay. And I can't remember. That probably wasn't one that we bought from somebody else. And we bought some. We bought one of those units from Independence when they were getting rid of all their stuff. You know. And, uh, Generator or just parts? No, I think we bought some. We bought some parts, but I thought we, we bought buy generators. I them. think the one that sits outside that gas unit I think came from Independence. The two, the, the, the 500 kW, the one that sits outdoors on the east side of the plant. That's possible, but the big yeah. ones have been there for no, a cap, while. The cap that I think came from them. There was others we were looking at, but somebody else got a hold of them before we got the rest of them. Right. So, we're good. It's a, it's unit 8 is up and running. Excellent. It's ready to go. Yep. Yep. Anything else? Not on that. So, I got a few, a couple more things. Uh, Please. I got a schedule sent to me from uh, Mike with the IB, IBEW Local 55, so we can begin contract negotiations, uh, contract ends in June. He gave me dates that he wasn't available. I'm going to go ahead and send the dates. I'll probably get some help and see if we can get it on a, a, a scheduler um, so that you guys can tell me when you're available. It'd be nice to maybe get it set on a Tuesday so you're going to be here maybe anyway and uh, he'll show up on the date. Yeah, I can't remember how we did it last time. It's been three years, and I don't know. I know we met him over in probably the yeah, conference room there. But it's the same, same type of meeting, right? Just we think we went earlier sometime. I think that's what we try to do. So I got. I'll send you off the list of dates so you can uh, tell me which ones work for you. And then uh, the funnest thing I got to do this last month is. Uh, go through a ream of paper. We uh, had one customer that was complaining about their high bill. And uh, normally, when it's winter time and they're complaining about a high bill, the first thing I ask, well, you got any electric heaters? Uh, that's normally the biggest culprit, the easiest one to find. And they didn't have any, but uh, evidently the, the apartment above them had them. And uh, they turned them on and left. And, uh, after going through all this, and it took a while. You got two meters. This is at 504 and 502 First Avenue. So it's uh, shaping you is the business, and there's a parking lot above. <laughs> and uh, two meters sitting outside, a foot apart, and I don't know what happened, uh, but they got the accounts and the meters swapped back and forth. So the shaping you has been paying for the energy that the apartment's been using. Apartments were paying for the energy that she can use. So I went, went through, and uh, according to the uh, Iowa Administrative Code, that we need to go back at least five years and uh, make it right. So one person that was living in upstairs from January of this year to November 2018, she uh, can you overpaid $554, and the uh, other. The people upstairs underpaid 567. The reason why it's different is because one's a commercial rate, one's a residential rate. They're close, but they're not exact, so they're not going to match. Uh, from November 2018, going back to July 2015, uh, Shaping U overpaid $989, and the other didn't pay $729. It's a different person, not the same renter. And then we went to uh, July 2015 to. to uh, or January 2015 to July 2015, and it was only uh, seventy-nine dollars versus eighty-six. So it's getting closer now. I may go back and look further than the five years. I think when I went over to talk to uh, Carol, who runs this shop, she said at one time both those meters were in her name, so it didn't matter. She was paying both the apartment rate and the downstairs, so it wouldn't have mattered at that point. I don't know how many. I think. The, the one that's in there now is maybe like the 14th change in that apartment. 
she's still at zero zero the original in that building so uh, and I talked to her and what she would like to do is go ahead and get the full amount it's one thousand six hundred twenty two dollars and sixty two cents she wants to get that back as a refund which we give a choice a refund uh, credit and I can't remember what the other one is but she wants to get it all now uh, you know she may try to sell it it, it take I don't know how many months for that thing uh, we will probably, I, I got a letter ready to go to uh, the occupant that's still in there and tell them about the underpaid. Uh, Carol's sympathetic to the person up there. I don't know what the relationship is, but uh, the fact that they were using an electric heater, she said if this problem hadn't existed, they would have turned the heaters off. And that, that may be true, but it did go through the meter and uh, she was hoping that we would waive the charges for the apartment upstairs. I said I'd bring it up, but, you know, I'll leave it up to you guys when you want me to go ahead and send a letter to them. Well, I can tell you this. I live across the street from that apartment. I level across the street from that apartment, and I noticed that from Christmas through January, the upper furnace wasn't running, which it, it was always running before. I mean, it's very obvious to me when it's running. So the upper furnace run, wasn't running. running the electric heat. Is yeah. I figured they just had shut the heat off and left, is what my guess was. Well, so they did not have the gas on. I can tell you that it, it, they had put it all on electric for that month because I was there and I saw that that furnace was not running. So that's, there, I, there's, I, I guess the question I would want to know is, uh, is, is the gas company still hooked up? You know, we you can't find that out, but. I don't know, I didn't, I didn't even look at the gas at that time. And uh, these other two uh, occupants that were up there they're not around anymore, so we're not going to have any luck going back on them now. Right. Well, I see there's two separate questions here. One is the re refund to her. Is, do you need a motion on that? Is that an automatic thing that happens? Well, if we, file the, if we file the call, it's an automatic. You know, you really have to. If, if you want to not pursue the, uh, the debt or the underpayment of the item on that, I probably want you to tell me that. I would want to, to have you have that in the minutes. So as far as the refund for the commercial space, that's just going to happen. Thank you for telling us about it. We we'll see how it happened. It's, we can call it our fault if you'd like. The movers are read backwards or whatever happened to create this situation. Uh, phys physically, everything was wired up correctly. Mm -hmm. They just got the account, the account numbers. number switch, yeah. yep. which is not their fault. Okay. No, and I don't think we would have never discovered this without this problem coming up. You know, it may have been that way for 15 years. I don't know. We wouldn't find it when she had both meters in her name. We're never going to find it then. So. Okay. What's the wish of the board? I don't know what's going to happen, but I would almost say, you know, if she'd run the heat normally versus strictly electric, what's an average, what's their average heat bill? For that period of time and reduce it down to what the average would be but i don't think you're going to get that information so i have a feeling you're not going to collect it period well this was you know uh, if the firms run like it normally did versus strictly electric quote yeah i don't know i can look and see whether we get the way no, let's we make sure we know what we're talking about we're talking about just the current resident how much was that out of the the thousand something it was, well, they, they underpaid 567. So we're talking 560. 567.76 is what they didn't pay enough on. Yeah, they okay. paid something, but they didn't pay enough. Right. So that's the amount we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. It's not like they didn't pay anything. They just didn't pay right. what their meter used. Right. But she's sympathetic towards us. We don't have to give her a full refund then, or just towards you. She didn't say that. I, say that. Okay. I mean, I, I hadn't spent quite a bit of time talking to her. Uh, and she was mad because she brought it up like two or three months ago. And I know Brad's been really busy with things that's going on there. But like I said, we wouldn't have found this. It was kind of a fluke because we were all over there looking at it. And uh, I'm not exactly sure how they discovered it. But uh, this is the second one I've had since the beginning of the year. Where we found things that are not right. And there's another one coming that I haven't gotten finished looking at with Brad. I'll wait till he comes back from vacation. 
Because bottom line is it's our mistake. We build it wrong. So we need it. Period. I'll make a motion that we are sympathetic and write it off. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed unanimous. Anything else, Tom? Let's see. Um, oh, well, the, the other one was the one that I had earlier where we had a meter swap out in May and something similar happened. One overpaid, one underpaid uh, $728.20 uh, was the exact amount because the rates were the same. I already sent letters to both of them saying, uh, we'll, we'll refund you, well, we're gonna credit the one and see how many it takes and the other one. I haven't heard back from them <laughs> that, that they owe us money. And uh, you know, that's a little bit different because they were there, used it. So I haven't heard back whether they're going to be able to not pay or not. It's just, and some of these, you know, we get people that uh, won't pay their last bill and they leave. We keep track of it. So if they ever come back to town, uh, they got to go straighten out their debt before they get into account. If they don't try to find someone else to put it in someone else's name, which has, I think, happened. They're trying to happen. So I haven't heard uh, how that one's going. Okay. And uh, that's all the fun I had for since January on custom billing. And that's the end of my report. Okay. Sandy? Nothing? Yes, sir. Uh, how much damage did the fire do <coughs> over the plant? It was no fire. It was. It was not, there was no fire. It was smoky from the oil. <coughs> no fire. So the individual I talked to, there was flames all in and uh, he didn't know what he was talking about. And he's a fire. Yes, he is. And he didn't know what he was talking about when he ran by and shut everything down. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and he called right. the fire department, and there was no fire. Okay. So okay. were you replacing <laughs> the compressor? Did it? Yeah, it was compressor work. And uh, Kevin's had this problem with these compressors off and on. Uh, he knew what it was, I think, right away. Uh, he, he told the fire department to go away. It was not a fire. Uh, I think I sent an email out saying there was no fire. Well, I sent it to uh, I sent it to her. I sent it to Chris Ward because they were all sent to the emails. So, uh, no fire. That's why I didn't report it because there was no fire. I disagree with you, but that's your opinion. <coughs> you know, I can tell you uh, when the compressor's smoking and uh, they're making smoke signals, but. Okay, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> smoke there's fire usually. <coughs> mm -hmm. Well, I think it was more like a fog. Uh, okay. Can't change it now. <laughs> you already admitted it was smoke. <coughs> okay, uh, I understand. Anything further on any reports? Any other business? Nope. Uh, motion for adjournment. So moved. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye.